Hello again and welcome to Crime in Music. I'm your host, Brian G. Kinsley, and with me as always, my friend Ben Rupel. What's crapping, and Brian? Well, occasionally, we'll bring you a new true crime podcast about people in and around the music industry and their misadventures into law-breaking. If you like music history, murder mystery, people with eccentricity, have we got a podcast for you! Are you asking or are you telling us that you have a podcast for us? Uh, I'm telling you, we have a podcast for you. Okay. Share with a friend. Tell your relatives. Right now, we're trying to get Europe back. We've lost Europe, man. We've the, The communication's broken down. Europe. So... If you have friends in England, Scotland, Ireland, any of the lands, Norway, Denmark, hell, even Sweden. How about Finland? Well, Finland. Finland. Land. Any of the lands. Any land. Send them your favorite episode. Tell them to give us a listen. Also, um, let us know how you're doing. Our email is feedback at crimeandmusic.com. Find us on all the social medias at crimeandmusic. Or my favorite way to communicate with you is speak pipe. Speak pipe. You can go right to our website little widget right there built into it says speak pipe push to record you can send us a voicemail message just like you're talking to us now we've got some speak pipes at the end of the show you can listen to um so there's that to look forward to but yeah we want to figure out uh how you guys are doing what's going on if you have any preferences when it comes to crime and music do you like country do you like rap do you like the obscure like feather thieves or do you like the mainstream like axel rose so let us know leave us a speak pipe no we don't want any we don't care about any of that let's be honest with our <laughs> listeners brian that's one of our trademarks we want to incorporate them into our show <laughs> what we want we want we do we but, want I to mean, incorporate them we want to know all the things about them and their favorite food and their dog's name and what day of the week's their best and worst hair day but mostly we want somebody to leave us some interesting tidbit about what we're talking about and we'll throw you up there on the uh, on the old podcast no you're right i do i like the feedback but man i i i do like help when i can get it picking the themes man because sometimes i don't know i don't know if people want to listen to old country if people want to listen to rap and pop stars like go hollywood on us i mean i don't know i, just, I know I, just want, I thought i'd test the water they want they want you brian they want to listen to you <laughs> You know, that's thank you that's nice <laughs> that's what they want that's nice give the people what they want well uh with that you can listen to me in this episode i'm gonna tell you about marriage okay family okay and kids it sounds like all the same thing dude if you're not an expert in this i really don't know who else to talk to but yeah marriage family and kids um they're separate i'm uh, you know people who are married who don't have families or kids and there's people who have families and kids who aren't married and there's kids who don't have families and they're also married or not yeah yep all right now it's time for guest guest i don't i feel like it's early on that one. Oh, that came in super early and super hard yeah. so don't worry about that all right but, uh, are you ready? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I am. I am. Um, I, I, I feel like I'm already kind of at a disadvantage because I have something in my head already. And as we all know, once something starts coming down the pipe of Ben's brain, it plugs up if it's not correct and I can't get past it. So <laughs> is it Hank Williams Jr.? <laughs> it's not Hank Williams Jr., but I will tell you this. It is in the. You're in the right. You're in the right world. You're okay. in the right genre. All right, then. Okay, okay. maybe, maybe. Okay. All right. You know, I need some hints then. I gotta try to clear that uh, from my brain. Okay. Try. Hint number one: multi-award-winning American country music singer. Billy Ray Cyrus. No, excellent <laughs> guess. Nineteen number one hits. Wow. Um. So think a little older and the, a little longer in a tooth. Okay. Um, all right, all right, one more, at least one more. She is one of the most widely recognized and awarded female country singers of all time. Dolly Parton? Oh my god, I Dolly Parton is on the roadmap, dude, for sure, but Loretta Lynn? that chick is squeaky clean. She never did anything wrong. I'd love to talk about Dolly Parton. Does we, she we'll does she really have a lot of tattoos or is that uh is that a like a internet urban legend? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Uh, 30 seconds. Loretta she first rose to fame in the 1980s alongside of her mother. Um, her birth Winona name Ryder. is Christina Ryder. Winona, 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 uh, Judd. Judd. Simonella. Oh, he's correct, everybody. All right, it's I got Winona it. Nailed it. Judd. 
All right. I, I needed a win, man. And I'm going to be got one. I'm going to be honest. I I don't know anything about her. I don't know any. Right? I don't right. know. It's not like I it's not like I've listened to her. If she comes on the radio, I'm pro- probably turning it. Oh, you'd be surprised. We'll get to what songs she's contributed to. I told you, 19 number one hits, man. So it's that's not a, like you aren't familiar with her music. Oh, of course, yeah, but that's a, that that's surprising. I didn't. I guess I didn't know she was that good. Oh, that was weak. Sorry, Sorry Michelle. Michelle. Uh, well, let me tell you about her. Uh, May 30th, 1964. Her uh, she was born Christina Claire Simonella in Ashland, Kentucky, USA. Well, she's she- got parents. She, oh, go ahead. She didn't use any of her parts of her name in her stage. No. Name, not a bet. We'll get to that pretty quick here. Uh, she's born to parents Charles Jordan. That's her dad. And then Naomi Gaines. That's her mom. And uh, her mom, Naomi, plays piano at the local church. And at the age of 17, she married this guy, Michael Chim- Chimanella. And uh, that's the guy her mom quickly got married to after being abandoned by her former boyfriend. And uh, Whiny, we're going to call her Whiny. Whiny's biological father, Charles Jordan. Okay. So we got young mom here popping up. Um, uh, Whiny's got a younger sister, Ashley. You may have heard of her, Ashley Judd. She's a famous actress. Big Kentucky fan. She's a big University of Kentucky <laughs> basketball fan. Yeah, right? Is oh, it? I, I didn't know so. that. Yeah. Okay. I'll believe you. Uh, I don't follow basketball. Well, so. I feel like they always put her on that TV during the, you know, the, the, the March Madness thing on ESPN. Okay. Yeah, I think I can so. I go with that. Yeah, she was in that. a movie, I think, with Morgan Freeman. Yes, that's what I remember. Uh, that's all I know. That's all I got. And then young Ashley does not... I can't do Morgan Freeman right now. It's not my head. I haven't <laughs> seen him enough. Anyway. Uh, 1968, Naomi and Chimarella moved, to, moved with the girls to Los Angeles, California. 1972, Naomi and Chimarella get divorced, and uh, then Naomi and the kids go on welfare. Um, 1976, Whiny and Naoma, Naoma, Naomi are living back in Kentucky. Her mom is working towards being a nurse. Like she's trying to get a job as a nurse, take care of the two kids. This is where Whiny takes inspiration from country music that she's listening to. Like her mom's listening to country music while she studies. And then, uh, little wine here she she plays a guitar she gets one for christmas she starts learning to play a guitar and then in 1978 the judds become good friends with uh a sleep at the wheel singer a guy named ray benson and now uh, how, guy, about how old are they or is is whiny at this point F- well six, uh, she's born in 64 64 to 78 so what is she oh 14? 12 12 14 oh 64 eight yeah 14 yeah okay all there right go. quick yeah, math good so you got a fourteen-year-old whiny. Uh, Benson's the guy who christened her with the name Winona because uh, he's got a song that mentions the city Winona, Arizona, and that nickname stuck. And then from there, she would legally change her name from Christina to Winona. And they decided to use uh, Naomi's maiden name because Judd is a little some rootsier sounding than uh, Ch- Chiminella. Yeah, so. that, that Chiminella sounds a little too, you know, ethnic. I think. I see. Not country music enough, I guess. Chim Manila's more uh something more East order. Coast Italian guy, you know? Like, something you order off the Mexican menu. Oh buddy, Chim Manila and Pasta. I don't know. I'm not I don't mean to be <laughs> think, anti-Italian. I don't want the Italian American Defamation League on me. I hey, who was it that said you can still some comedian just like, oh, you can still make fun of Italians. It's fine. Oh, every time. It's me, Mario. Everybody does it. <laughs> hey. It's fine. It's like one of the last, one of the last ethnicities you can still like kind of rip on and not right? get in trouble for it. I mean, I really think Jersey Shore sort of set that one up, where it's just like, hey, yo, hey, we these Italians, huh? <laughs> you know, with the fist pumping and the whole snooky and the whole thing. Just yeah, I think that sort of they were just like, well, you can do all you want now, guys. There's nothing we can say. Cause... I don't think Andrew Dice Clay didn't it helped them at all either. Ooh. Andrew Dice Clay is weird. Because that used to be a character, and then that's who he turned into. And I find that weird to me. Like, um, I forgot that. Because he just used to be a guy, like I, Andrew Dency or some weird, la- like a normal person last name. And Dice was the guy he did on stage. Larry, Larry and the then cable all of a guy. sudden. Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, oh dude, he went to Cornell. Larry, that guy. Larry the cable that guy. guy bothers me. Yeah. Larry, Larry the Cable Guy. I mean, like, come on, Ivy League education, and you're talking about how peanut butter sticks to the dog's roof of his mouth. It's like you're talking. And I'm like, dude, you've got, like, a graduate degree in English literature or something. And and he's got old video of him doing stand-up where he's just talking like his normal self. 
And I've it was, seen that. It was just one day he's like started talking like a southerner or whatever. Yup. Uh, it's just a character they play, and then they catch on, and so then you become the character, and it's, it's worked out pretty well for a lot of people. I so. only well, dislike well, I him because I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, all right. I'm also uh, jealous of Naomi and Whiny because 1979, the two of them moved to Nashville, Tennessee to procure... Uh, ah! Words are hard. They moved to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a career in music. I should have done that. That would have been great. What do you mean? Uh, I should have moved to Nashville, man, back in the day when I was actually like at the top of my game. Could have joined a local band and then made it big. You would have been turning tricks for blow by now, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the confidence <laughs> in my musical ability. No, I'm trying to remember there great. was a there was a there was I think it was a Sunny in Philadelphia reference. No. Of course. No, you're going to get spit out the back end of the porno industry, of the gay porn industry or something. <laughs> no. We had Mindy McCready fall out of the bottom of the porn industry. So Yeah, yeah, well. She's check like, out if you if you like country music singers and the female persuasion, we've got other episodes. Uh, I hear her name, and there's only one leather pair of pants I think of. <laughs> Let's see. We'll get to Mindy McCready later on in the show. Just hang in there. Oh, but she's, right now, she's in it. Okay, good. Good. I miss her. Well, I miss that. Yes. I miss that. I miss you'll, her. You'll like it. You, it'll be. It's good for you. It's. It'll be good for All you. All right. So let's get back here. We're back in the 70s, 79-ish, 80. Uh, Diana, she renames herself Naomi. That, that's These people don't have any real names. Who knows who they are? She begins playing music with her daughter. Um, again, uh, Whiny's going to sing and play guitar. And uh, Naomi, Diana, is going to like sing along with her. Dian- so now, Di- Diana, Naomi is the mother. Correct. She's okay. the older of the two, the mom. And so Ashley, we're going to refer to her as Naomi. And Ashley's a sister. And Correct. Winona's the other sister, the daughter. Okay. Yeah, you got two daughters, Winona and Ashley. And then there is a son who comes up here pretty quick. Um, I don't I didn't really look into him. And well, then Naomi, the mom. Yeah, so. the son comes up and eh, about 12 hours later, it sets. Every day. Goes down. <laughs> All right. Naomi, she was a, a just a hardcore promoter of their act. She was out there hustling the streets in Nashville. Um, reportedly, she was propositioned. She was sexually harassed. Um, she was, gets, like, just, you know, like, sent away. Like, oh, just, you know, not a man in trying to in the man's world when she's promoting the act. But the problem is she's out there promoting, but she's got a tape that they made for 30 bucks at a Nashville. Um, she's handing that to, like, Nashville music producers. Anybody who'd listen to it. She's like, hey, I got this demo tape. Me and my daughter. I'm going to give it a try. So she's got so the good old-fashioned demo tape out there. She's got a legit demo tape out there. Yeah. 1983, they get their big break when Naomi convinced a record producer whose child she took care of as a nurse. He, she was like, come to my house. Listen, listen to me and my daughter sing. And the guy's like, all right, you saved my kid's life. I, I will do that. The producer gets to their place, listens to him sing. Dude is charmed by the duo. They signed RCA and Curb as the duo, the Judds. Okay. Those are D's, not G's, everybody. I'm saying the Judds. So that was, that was what year? 1983. Okay, so um, Winona's in her kind of early 20s? 20, Gotta be. 1920? Okay. Right. I, it, so, it helps me keep in, when I say this, I feel like I'm not the only one out there. It just helps me put a timeline together and how old the person that we're talking about is. You know, I see. Yeah. The mental image. It's just a, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, Michelle. Uh, okay. Between 1983 and 1991, the Judd's chart 23 hit singles on Billboard's Hot Country Singles, now Hot Country Songs charts. They included 14 number ones. They also record eight studio albums, one Christmas album, and two greatest hit compilations. In their six-year career, the Judd's sold more than 20 million records worldwide. They had won over 60 industry awards, including five Grammy nominations, nine Country Music Association awards, seven of them consecutive, so year after year after year after year. I mean, they were they year. got you're you're I, I feel like compressing this part of their career. <laughs> yeah, we're which going is fine quick through the Judds. I don't need to hear about the good times. Get me get me feed me, Brian. Good times, feed me. Bad times. Yeah, man, I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll get there. Yeah, so they uh, they they were big. They did go big. I mean, they they At the time, they were the biggest selling duo in country music and they remained so until they were totally eclipsed of the heart by what duo in the 90s? Heart no, it's a country duo. Somebody um, and somebody. 
the Wilson, the Wilson Phillips. <laughs> the, Wilson Phillips is country to you. I don't know. Um, the the Dixie Chicks. Oh, that's not bad. Huh? No, it's Brooks and Dunn, dude. Brooks and Dunn. Oh, I would have never guessed Brooks and Dunn. I was trying to think of chick, really? chick bands. Oh, yeah. No, I guess I should have uh, said yeah. another. Well, I did say another duo, but I didn't say they were dudes. Another dude duo. A Brooks dudo. and Dunn. Bro- they were the biggest thing until Brooks and Dunn. So. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, they were playing, they were, they weren't the biggest chick group. They were the biggest group. Just the biggest group. Right. Correct. Now, unfortunately, not to kick somebody when they're down, but at this time, a chronic bout of hepatitis C forces mom Naomi into retirement following the 1991 farewell tour, and the duo breaks up. Ooh. Hep, yeah. hep, but hep C. Afraid so. Yeah. I, are there, there's vaccinations for those things, right? I, I don't know. You want me to ask my resident um, lab technician in the room? Well, she's sitting there. Hey. Hey, honey, Sarah, is there a is there a vaccination for hepatitis C? She says no. She doesn't think so. Oh, dude. Okay, so Naomi is out. Well, I mean, it's so. you can live with it. Pam Anderson's got it, right? Oh, I I don't know. It kind of took her off my big board. Pretty much, right? Like <laughs> I had the same thing. I heard I heard there's there was a list of actresses who had some STDs, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she just like took off like five of the top ten. So. Hey, there is a but, there is a that's Hollywood. So I'm at my dad's house the other night, and uh, we're out in the bar and just kind of hanging out Sunday night. And, sidebar, yeah, sidebar. Of course, sorry, but we don't got to say that anymore, do we? So no, uh, you do. You have to announce it. You have to <laughs> so, announce it. So when I'm editing, I know sidebar. You can just set the set your set your mic down. Just all right, chop look, it up. Ben's yeah. going in. Uh, he had. Like he's he's got a TV out in the barn, but it's not hooked to c- cable or anything. It's just kind of terrestrial. <laughs> and these Ooh, di- terrestrial television, yeah, the digital. It's all you know. Yeah, yeah, a pretty good station, a little antenna he's got. I didn't know, and maybe I'm the only person on Earth that doesn't know this, but there is a reboot of Baywatch. Oh yeah, Zac Efron. I think it's even er- newer than that. It seemed pretty fresh. And Sorry, the opening, the opening, you know, I'll be there, there when you're ready. I'll, you know, whatever that goes through all the stuff. And I have all the different characters on there. There's got to be yep. four. There, there are 14 separate platinum <laughs> oh blonde chicks. Oh, yeah, of course. With, sure. With mi- misfitting bathing suits in the good way. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's keeping all these people straight? I'm just like, and this, and this actress's name is, you know, Molly McGregor and Patty Wise and this, that, and the other. Like, I can't keep track of all that, but I guess whatever. If you can get them all in there, get them all in there. Oh, look hey, it. if you know how to run in slow motion, you hire that girl oh, right there. That's what you need. That was the whole intro. That was it too. I remember. I'm like, this is all slow motion, and then at the end. Just to make everybody feel better about themselves. They put like that late, like 45, 50 year old dude. He's kind of, <laughs> he's kind of, he's kind of. Still oh, buff though. He's kind of got a couple muscles. He's kind of hairy, definitely yeah. balding. And he's yeah, got. The dad figure. Yeah, the dad figure. He's diving like off a boat into the water. Like the actual lifeguard yeah. that's required to be there by the law. <laughs> yeah, probably legitimately an actual <laughs> lifeguard. Yeah, we're going to hire this as an. It's, 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 hey, as a producer talking to one producer to another, he's like, hey, if we just hire this guy as uh, like l- literally a lifeguard, uh, we can pay him less. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great idea. And we got a lifeguard. And- <laughs> We got a lifeguard, right? Just in case silicone doesn't flow, we're good to go. <laughs> Those aren't two buoys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear more about whiny. What do we call Wheezy? We're calling him Wheezy. No, that's uh, what's who is Wheezy? Oh my God! Um, you better oh, get it, Brian. I know. We're right? not going any oh, further God. until you get. We, the- we're stuck. We're stuck here. <laughs> okay, I can't go anywhere. Um, we've did this. It was episode three. I mean, I know who Wheezy is. Wheezy. He's a little penguin. He's a little penguin from Toy Story. No, <laughs> that's Wheezy. Trust me. No, the uh, it's Jefferson's wife. There Wheezy. you go. That's the other one. There you, there go. you go. Lenny Kravitz's I mean, who... mom's friend. Wheezy Kravitz. We're off topic now, but who is the Wheezy? God, I've forgotten now. Not Little John. Oh, oh, you mean um crickets? 
Who's episode three? Oh, I was I, honestly I was thinking of uh, George Jefferson's wife. Um, well, that's wheezy, but I mean, we uh, had an episode. Little Wayne. Little Wayne, thank you. Jeez, that was gonna drive me nuts. All right. All right. Now back to Little Wayne. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I told you, 1991, uh, they break up. Whiny signs to I, uh, MCA Records, 1927. That didn't come out right. Redo. 1927. January, that makes sense. January 27, 1992, uh, Whiny performs solo on television for the first time in the American Music Awards. She unveils She Is His Only Need, the first single from her self-titled solo debut album. I don't know. I don't remember that. She is his only need. She is his only need. I, That's not right. I bet you you could play any of those you know hits that she had, and you'd kind of remember them. I bet they r- kind of run together in your head, though. I, uh, probably. Back then, if I was listening to country, it was kind of like country gold, you know, like the older country. It was Classic not a country. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was. It was not. I was not listening to uh, modern Brooks country. And Right. Which today I kind of like. I, 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 if I listen to modern country today, um, I'm cherry picking like a soul bee. I am taking. <laughs> I hey, there's a new Applebee's commercial that's got a famous country song that's like really popular right now. Love it. Yes, love it. It is. There's a TikTok dance that goes to it. Love that uh, song. What the hell is that song? It's like two. How we do it on <laughs> Applebee's on a Friday night. Got a something, milkshake something with two straws milk. in it. I don't know how <laughs> everything goes. I don't know if you're a regular listener to this show or not, but we do have a couple holes in our musical genres, and uh, country is one of them, especially modern pop contemporary country. Don't know much about it, y'all. Sorry. Uh, but we're learning. We're learning tonight. This is well, what we're doing. We're, uh, today. Now. It's still um, it's still a, it's still a mystery, uh, a mystery to us, and that's why we love it. Life is a mystery. Uh, she is his only need goes to number one on the Billboard country charts that year. Also does the album's next three singles. I saw the light and my strongest weakness. I have no idea how that would go. My. No one else on earth is also number one country song in 1992. She is his only need and no one else on earth are also minor adult contemporary hits, meaning they sort of crossed over into pop. Um, the latter one peaked at 83 on the Billboard Hot 100. Hey, you hit the Hot 100, man. Yeah. And my strongest weakness is number four country hit. So That's big. The album ships five million <gasps> copies in the United States, earns five time multi platinum certification from the RIAA, the Record Industry Something Association. So basically, she did good after ditching her mom with the Hep C. She's well, like, I don't need you. It, so- it sounds like they did really well together. I remember that. I remember they were a duo. They did really, they were big. And then I, I, I faintly, I kind of remember her doing, you know, her own thing for a little while too. Yep, a little um, bit. And please forget, honest, honestly, God, please forgive us. We're not. I mean, we these are big artists. She's a huge artist. Her and her mother were a huge duo. Um, I'm sure I would remember most of the songs that they sung, but that was not my that was not my bag, baby. That was no, dude. No, but they huge props. They were not only doing it; they were kind of doing it. And uh, in it wasn't that long ago, but it was definitely more of a man's world. Oh, we get into some women empowerment here. They have a whole thing about yeah. history instead of history, so we'll get there. Okay, yeah, I, I and that's cool. I like that. That's I, you know, they were you go. they they weren't big they weren't they weren't big women performers in country. They weren't big performers in country. They were big performers. Period. That's true. Trip typically now if we if we typically if we cover um. Any artist on their show, on this show, they're usually pretty darn influential, but especially the women have been almost all pioneers, like Lucille Ball and uh, that heavy metal girl um, who with the chainsaws. She was pretty hardcore. Um, Mindy McCready, she was pretty hardcore. I mean, there's always been some, there's some, been some pretty hardcore chicks, man. When do we get to Debbie Gibson so. and Tiffany? As soon as they break the law. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But in that vein, 1993, her second album, Tell Me Why, ain't nothing but a party. Tell me why. It's called Tell Me Why. I assume that was it. That's released. Uh, also, a uh, platinum selling album. It accounts for five consecutive top 10 hits on the country charts. Title track, Only Love. Uh, next one, Is It Over Yet? That doesn't sound like good love. Yeah, uh, next one, you, Rock Bottom. You know who I think would know, and is probably if she ever listened to this podcast, I don't think she does, 
would would be screaming at her her uh, her radio right now, or Who, whatever she's listening. His wife. Oh sure, she yeah. big country music girl fan. Yeah, and she's I mean fan very, girl, talented talented singer in her own right. Um, I was thinking that same phrase. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, she was in one of the bands I was in. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, there you go. Yeah, and I bet I, I bet you that this would be someone she would be very familiar with. I think the only problem there is that you and I are the ones talking about it. Well, we can. Pr- I'll tell her. This is this podcast. But- <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. If you listen, give us some feedback. Yeah. Sing. There you go. Hey, what if any of our listeners got on SpeakPipe and don't introduce yourself, unless you want to, of course, but just sing us, sing us a couple bars of any any Winona Judd song. Oh, that would be awesome. Bonus points. I would points. appreciate that. Bonus points if you get a buddy to do it with you and do a there duet with Winona and her mother. Uh, what was her name? Um, Cassandra? Naomi. 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 Simino- Chiminoa. Ch- Sam hey. Chiminoa. Hey, Chimichanga. The wrong way, buddy. All right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, tell me why. It's your third crossover hit see i told you i knew the backstreet boys stole that peaking at number 77 on the pop charts they didn't really number four in the adult contemporary charts 1993 she sings guest vocals on clint black single uh bad goodbye from the album no time to kill this becomes her biggest pop hit at number 43 the success the success of this song leads to a tour called the black and Y tour featuring clint and whiny as headliners uh what movie was that no time to kill yeah, nailed it. What movie is no? I'm asked. That's a <laughs> that's a question. What movie is that? No time to what, kill. No, no time to kill, man. Is that I a James Bond movie? I I doubt it. I highly doubt James <laughs> Bond had a country song as the lead track. No time to kill. Maybe. All right. No time to kill. All right. I'll put. I'm writing this down. Homework for Ben later. Look up. Look up. No time to kill, and then slow burn. Two good country movies right there, guys. Do that, girls people non-binary everyone y'all can i just say plus yeah i guess I mean, right we we put all those letters I, i'm i'm serious let's just shorten that right to plus plus everything men women plus yeah i think it would be easier it, to get hmm. into a, a a a real world conversation and t- and said lgbtq plus Q. i mean that's a mouthful that's a mouthful well, you're skipping like eight letters or so well, right. i think there's like 74 letters i think somebody actually said but i don't want to m- exclude anyone so i don't know that is not a fact right we'll just say plus i'm i'm 100 serious on that i think we could do this just i'm gonna plus. say it. the plus the hashtag the plus plus yeah there you go all right changing the world well one one another hashtag plus. at a time <laughs> that's that's how it goes nowadays another plus and uh something that probably was hashtagged is whiny and naomi briefly reunite for the Super Bowl halftime show. Super Bowl twenty eight halftime show to be Hold specific. Up. Can I guess who was in it? Uh sure. Do you have the answer? No. <laughs> guess away. I feel like the Buffalo Bills were in that. Uh, you're probably right. What year? Uh ninety three. I'm looking anyway. I'm looking it up. Oh, are you? I was gonna look it up too and I thought, nah, I'm not gonna take the time. Nailed it. Uh, American League football game between the American Football Conference champion Buffalo Bills and the uh, and National Conference Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, the American football. I didn't think it was the Cowboys versus Edinburgh. Holy shit! No, this was not on the this was not on the kicker this this year because the Cowboys defeated the Bills by the score of fifty to seven fifty two to seventeen. Does that cover the spread? <laughs> I have to imagine the spread and the over. The Bills, the Bears, the Patriots, the Jets. I hate them all. It's not your. It's not your fault that you're born a Lions fan. <laughs> it's only not your fault. fault if you die a Lions fan. <laughs> oh, that's rough. That's, yeah, the that's Lions rough. are rough. All right, let's not talk about stupid fo- footy ball. Talking about being rough, 1994, Whiny makes an appearance on the Leonard Skinner tribute album, Skinner and Friends, spelled with a Y, uh, where she covers the song, What Song Did She Cover from Leonard Skinner? I would guess... Freebird. Hey, nailed it. Woo. Well, I feel like you teed it up knowing I was going to hit it real hard because I, 
I'm not a big. I know a few Skinner songs, whatever. Right. Uh, I mean, you only have a couple choices. Free, really, Freebirds but... is a big one. I like. Uh, what's the other one about the, um, my uh, uh, the one about b- being happy as a kid. Um, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Brian. That was gonna that was gonna itch my brain all night if you didn't give it to me. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Only, um, only son. Only. Eh, I can't remember. All right. Continue. Uh, uh, Whiny's got some negative publicity. She has a child out of wedlock, which Ooh. back in the days of the '90s and country, you couldn't do that. It's so stupid. <laughs> so stupid. So, uh, December twenty third, nineteen ninety four. Uh, Whiny and a man named Arch Kelly the third have a son, Elijah Judd. He's born in Nashville, USA, Tennessee, USA. So seriously, that was that was a that was a taboo back then in the nineties, right? What was that third? Yeah, Elijah took her out, man. That's, he took her off the charts. Yeah, so that was twenty five ish years ago or something like that. Yes. <clears throat> and that's bull crap because this young lady probably successful uh, my, my, with my, she, beyond her need of wealth. Sure. She can handle this kid on her own. It's not like she has to go work in a diner for twelve hours a day. <laughs> no, that's no, true. right? And, and no, right? And yet, I still, they. I get it. If you're, if you're a, uh, if you're a young person and you, you know, you have a baby when you're young and you can't kind of take care of it, that's a little rougher. You maybe you made a, a choice that you would maybe even probably admit. You're like, man, I wish kind of didn't have that baby and. I'm taking care of a baby. It's a lot of work. I'm only a young kid, not making enough money to take care of myself. But she had all the money in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no well, shame in that game. She has all the money in the world. 1995, she's absent from the country charts completely. I mean, as she's, long as she she's out. As long as she bottle feeds. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. You have to. <laughs> um, let's get into, uh, I was talking to you about Whiny and this guy, Arch Kelly the third. The third. Um, January 21st, 1996, they marry, and she is four months pregnant with their second kid, a girl this time, Grace Kelly. That was her, they named her Grace Kelly. Yes. Well, it wasn't by accident. Uh, wait, why? What do you think? Well, no, I mean, Grace Kelly was a name, and sometimes... Oh, yeah, I guess it was. I didn't put that together. Jeez, man. Well, no, I mean, sometimes you'll be what you'll be saying? named like... um um Ginger Rogers, Grace Kelly, uh, Fred Astaire... What was the name? Um, oh, I had a kid. I think I even talked about this. Um, baseball kid, and his he was named uh, Emmett Brown. <laughs> did you call him Doc? Yes, I did. <laughs> and and of course you did. And that was on. Unpre- that was actually shot. it was he was young. He's plenty young enough to his parents had to have known that that was the name of the doctor on Back to the Future. You know the main character there. And I asked. No one will know. Who's going to know? Well, no one will know. I asked him, like, first game, hey, you're uh, parents f- fans of Back to the Future? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. They but are. then there's other ones that you'll be named, like, um, um, oh, what was the, uh, the, there was a Seinfeld one where they, that Elaine's boyfriend was named after a serial killer. And it wasn't until, you know, it was much later in his life when the guy became a well-known serial killer. And Elaine's boyfriend just so happened to have the same name associated with the same you know like um randy smith and joy or whatever and he's like hi huh, randy that's a tough name he's like yeah it did sucks well dude i mean but they named her grace kelly the name karen used to be a perfectly fine name and then now right right yes you're like oh my god a karen They're like ah oh, you're one of them you know and it's like gotta help you if you're one of those Poor women named Karen right now. There are. I mean, that's not going to go away for like a half a decade or more. And there are people mad about it. There are. There. There is an anti-Karen Karen group out there. Just uh, call me Carrie. I prefer <laughs> that. Doesn't that invokes like blood and prom? And I don't. That's even worse. How about not Karen? Not Karen anymore. Not Karen at all. Not caring about you. All right. You. Uh, people who do care are the people in 1996 who bought her third album, Revelations, that also is certified platinum. This album is led off by her fourth and final number one hit, To Be Loved By You. I sort of remember that one. To Be Loved By You. To Be Loved By You. I, by you. I, I think anyone listening to this that's remotely familiar with that song would disagree with you, Brian. 
<laughs> You're probably right. Despite the song's uh, minor adult contemporary success, the album's other three singles were not well received. Uh, Whiny's fourth is titled The Other Side. Unlike her previous country pop oriented albums, this album focuses more on blues and rock. She's kind of going for that blues rock sound. The album did not sell well as her first three, however, only earning a gold certification. 1999, Whiny decides to reunite with her mother and uh, tour beginning on New Year's Eve. One month later, she releases her fifth solo album, New Day Dawning. Man, she's cranking out the albums. Well, I think she's trying to keep striking while that iron's hot, you know? I mean... That's true. You know, it takes a bit of a... It starts to take a bit of a, a an ebb, and she... Hey, Mom, I need you to come over here and add a little new blood again, so take a couple uh, drugs or whatever you got to get her on the hep C <laughs> issue. <laughs> Juice it up, have a couple oranges, Get out and here. Uh, remind people why I'm famous. There's a new drink please? out. It's called Red Bull. You get you get you some. It gives you. I heard it gives you wings. Get out here. You'll like those. Do you November twenty like, second. Do you like two thousand? Do you like Red Bull? Me? Yeah. I, I've had Red. Uh, if it's it, uh, you know Red Bull and, and what vodka or whatever it is. Oh. <laughs> Jaeger bombs. Whatever. <laughs> that's uh, that's the only time I drink Red Bull. I only man. like Red Bull if it's mixed with you know alcohol. Alco- yeah. Forty proof well, liquor. Like most things, in the, in the <laughs> drink. I like it to be. <laughs> I've I have had Red Bull. Got to have a kick to it. I've had Red You've Bull. Never had Red Bull. Oh, I've had it. I've had it. Yo, I've had it three times without liquor. I don't like my heart to go that fast. I mean, honestly. Yeah, I've had it. Like, uh, one time, I had to get up on two hours of sleep to go salmon fishing, so I grabbed two of them. Uh, another time, it was another hangover situation. We're like, oh, let's get a Red Bull. Let's go. And then the third time, I think. Somebody, oh, I think it was a name that shall not be mentioned, offered me one. I'm like, man, oh, yeah? let me have one of those. Yeah, let's go. I'll take a Red Bull. Yeah. By the way, he loved the Edward Reist episode. I, we, Him and I listened to it on a long, long car ride the other day. I, You told me. That's oh, good. Oh, I was telling the audience. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Ben has recently crossed the border, not to Taco Bell, but to Canada. And uh, he got his fishing trip that he's been talking. If you're, if you're a regular listener, you'll know that Ben's been itching to go to canada to go fishing in quebec because who doesn't love fishing in quebec <laughs> I, I i got to sit in a uh uh a legitimate sauna eh oh you sat in a sauna eh? oh yeah we got we so the place we're sidebar eh? this is gonna be a little story so um it's close we're, we're from michigan we talk like that every once in a while and so canada ontario's like right there yeah they're not too far away they're they're our neighbors no, they're our the, friendly the ambassador bridge and we're there yeah yeah or the international bridge and we got the uh windsor tunnel um oh, i forgot about the other one the other bridge the two bridges and, and then what's the other bridge that goes over to sarnia i can't remember but i was gonna say sarnia yeah so anyways um there are four of us that go up there or you know all americans we're heading up there get up there and we were staying in this in this little camp. Didn't have any electricity. A little solar light. A little solar generator. So we had a little bit Sleeping of... Sleeping in a yurt. I mean. No, it was it was just a <laughs> dumpy old cabin. Actually, it was pretty nice. It was, it was, it was all right. Everything was uh, propane lights. But the, the guy... What are you, Amish? The Amish stay up there. There's a, t- three or four cabins down. They The Amish own a bunch of property up there. And they come up from Indiana or some crap. I don't know how they get there. I don't know how they get there, but they get there. That was, then we're not going to go into a double sidebar on that. It's not that area of story. No double sidebar. <laughs> I almost brought in the Mennonites as a triple sidebar, but that'd just bring it too close. That's to... that's starting to that's going to start breaking the matrix. So, um, <laughs> so we're um we're, we're there's no shower, there's no running water, and we went up about 20 minutes away is where the guy that runs these cabins. He has got cabins all over, boats all over, whatever the the outfitter. And we said, hey, and he and in 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 the town, he is the town. He's got a little general store. A little motel, hotel, a couple small cabins right there in the lot, a gas station. Um, that's it. Did you happen to uh, free a town from a local uh, corrupt city official in your bar by fighting as the bouncer, the cooler, as it were? Um, well, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> be cool. So you, went whole, you went full Swayze on him? Until it's time to done? not be cool. <laughs> we go into town, and or this little store thing. And and we asked the guy Rob, we're like, hey Rob, you got a, you know, is there, you know, a shower you can use or something? We'll pay five bucks, get, you know, use one of your rooms. He's like, oh yeah, hey, we got a shower, hey, you can just come over and just, uh, it's all included. There's a shower, and would you like that? You know, there, it's hooked to a sauna. You want to go in there and take a sauna? And 
and one yes, of the, one yes, of the, I do. Well, I didn't care. I just want to take a shower, really. And oh. the, but the one guy we're with, um, um, Brewmeister Nick, his his he lit right up like a switchboard. He was excited. He's like, "Oh yeah, I want to do a sauna." So yeah, so we did. It was hotter than shit. Jeez, you man, yeah, right. dude, sauna's great for you. Do you realize it reduces like all cause mortality by like forty percent if you do sauna like five times a week like that? I think that's how Deadpool got started. So, <laughs> um. You look like an avocado. <laughs> That's all you had to do. But I was in a sauna. You want to put that on the uh, the picture of me and sweating my ass off with a towel wrapped around my ass and put that up on the Twitter um, page? Yeah, man. That's going Instagram. A- That's actually, all the medias. We're gonna, I'm going to keep that to myself for my uh, fans only, pa- only oh. fans page. What is it? Is it then only? Go to our Patreon slash uh, <laughs> Crime and Music and we'll share these pictures with you for a small donation to the podcast. Yeah, you get you got to make two small donations because I got, I got a lot of flesh up there. <laughs> <laughs> Pay by the pound. That's what you get. Hey, man, you got to be two something to do something. You know what I'm saying? Ah, yes. Yes. So I was at a sauna. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. I'm in a sauna. I sauna. You sauna now. Ben, you're pretty I much sauna. Scandinavian, <laughs> especially with that accent. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to have a little, after you spend a couple of days in Canada, you got to have a little bit of an accent. All you Yankees, you guys come up here and you call them walleye. I don't know where y'all get that, but they're called pickerel, eh? You got an orange pickerel. You got a green pickerel. There's a silver pickerel. And you know there's going to be a black pickerel too, don't you know? Now it's well, getting a little bit of Wisconsin. <laughs> so, Much like the pickerel choices, November 22nd, 2003, Whiny marries her second husband, her former bodyguard, a guy named D.R. Roach. Dr. Roach, but it's just D.R. The period is in between the D and the R, so he's not a doctor. It's D.R. Roach. David Robert. I know the guy. There you go. Yeah. November 13th, 2003, police arrest uh, country singer Wine, uh, Winona. Whiny on the charge of driving under the influence. An officer clocked her Land Rover going 47 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone early this morning. Uh, the arrest report says the singer consented to a breath test after police smelled alcohol on uh, notice. She had watery eyes and dilated pupils. Police say she registered more than twice the legal limit of 0.08. She had a blood alcohol level of what's your guess? 0.16. 0.17. Man, that was real good. Price is right. You win. Twice Tennessee's legal limit. Police also say Whiny told them she didn't remember how many drinks she had. Uh, she was released on bond. There's video, if you want to watch that, of her getting pulled over and attempting to complete two sobriety tests. She's like trying to find her finger to her nose and pokes herself in the uh, left rib. So no, I'm kidding. That's not what that, she did. That was in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty actually rather common. You know, they get... When you get drunk, I mean, if you let's say you're going out and you're tying one on, and you're partying your ass off, it's yeah, two, three in the morning. You're not legal to drive until like noon the next day. Sometimes. Well, that's true, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. If you think you're still drunk in the morning driving home after you know passing out at your buddy's house, you probably are. <laughs> Although I was thinking, I, I interpreted it as, man, I like day drinking too, but just don't get behind the wheel, you know? You're going to crack crack a couple open, dude. You stay at the house. You just get yourself set, you know? Yeah. Make a day of it. Yeah. I, yeah. If you don't drink and drive, you're not supposed to do that. Well, that is correct. The 39-year-old pleads guilty to drink dri- uh, drink driving, drunk driving after the traffic stop. Uh, judge suspends her license for one year, orders her to perform 200 hours of community service. Um, she is also placed on probation and forced to pay court costs. And with that, we're going to take a break and listen to my high school band, 21 Days. Uh, we had a couple guys get pulled over for some drinking and driving. I remember that, coming back from a gig one time. Did- I got pulled over uh and because i had a headlight out man i got pulled over a lot for having fuzzy dice in my mirror and having a headlight out so if you guys are doing that just fix the light it's not hard but uh anyway this will bring me back to those times All those dudes vanished in the air. Well, we're back, uh, and we're back. So let me let me ask you: 
if we had to do a crime in music on uh, the on your band there. Could we? On 21 Could days? we? Could we? Is there anybody that has? Oh, we certainly could. Is there anybody that has? <laughs> they'd be all juvenile crime. I mean, and uh, there'd be some that would be like, we'd be admitting to unsolved crimes. Like the but, stolen uh, amplifier? Yeah, or? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think I was going to make a terrible joke saying that some of the music was a crime, but no, it was pretty good. I was, it wasn't that bad, right? It was I mean, the, you know, we had a thing. It was the, it was the sound of the time, man. It's not a time, man. Yeah, man. Oh, dude. I mean, we were in it. We were right in that groove and stuff. Yeah, love ballad. <laughs> Rock ballad. <laughs> that man went on to become a very successful cell phone kiosk operator. <laughs> So some, I will have you know some of the it's highest some of the higher higher level cell phone kiosk operators that you'll ever exactly. meet. Exactly. Speaking of uh, classic songs from that time, 2005, Whiny has success on the Hot Dance Airplay charts with the cover of Foreigners. I want to know what love is. I, and I want, want you to, to show, show me. me. Oh, okay, put it away. Stop showing me that. I want to know what love is. That's all I know of that song. Yeah, and I want you to something, something me. All right, so she that covered really she covered that song. That was it. She did. For, uh, her rendition, it is Foreigner's Hit. Uh, she peaked at number 12 with that one on the charts. And also in 2005, her story, Scenes from a Lifetime, is released, which is concurrently released with her best-selling autobiography, Coming Home to Myself. So she releases a record and a book. And the album included one studio track, Attitude, written by Whiny and John Rich of Big and Rich. So didn't you say Big and Rich was her, he, like, the the group that knocked her off the mountaintop? That was Brooks and Brooks Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. Excuse me for getting my male duos of the era mixed up. If you don't have an ampersand in your country duo name, it's just wrong. Um, And let's not forget about cowboy troy i like cowboy troy that was i have very very fond memories of the the big huge debut album that big and rich had i don't know what it was something horses probably i don't know whatever but we were up at torch right we were up at torch lake we had that whole entire album on repeat at the sandbar (laughs) and it's about 500 boats pulled up into a line on the fourth of july all day long beer booze and babes it was a great day well that song uh peaked at number 40 on the country charts that same year she released a solo album a christmas album a classic christmas oh her second christmas included... album. second christmas album nice nice but her first solo christmas album i guess i'll say it that okay way. okay nice it had a latin version of ave maria uh, she also sang an overdub duet with elvis presley oh really so invoking guess, Elvis. Elvis sang part and she yeah, there you go. Which I should put a picture up. We do have uh the skull of Elvis in the corner of the studio here. So just in case people wanted to know, our studio is watched over by the skull of Elvis. So is that could that be legitimized forensically by a pathologist that might be um trained in the three D printing of skulls to faces? Is it le- is it actually like a? It's legit. That's how I got it. Yeah, legitimately, they did a, a high res scan of Elvis's skull, and uh, because of the nature of my work, I have access to things on the internet, and I found it. And because of the nature of my family, my brother is a three D printer, and he printed it for me. So oh, okay. So you it. didn't you didn't buy it. You just you just found the 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 cat the the, the scan the file. Um, Correct. Okay. So over under Brian. Okay. Either of us or both of us, but one of us at least. Do you think we'll ever have our skulls uh, 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 saved in a in a uh, in a uh, what kind of a file is that called even? Uh, a C a three D three D file. I don't think we're ever three D file. Are you gonna flay my flay my head when I'm dead and get the meat off my bones and then scan my bone into a file for me would you do that i'm pretty sure they can do that without killing you i think it's just an mri 
Oh, that doesn't sound like fun at all. <laughs> that's, that's, my new, that's like when somebody's like, oh, when I die, I want to be shot out of a can. Well, we you're like, you know what? That's just a body flopping out of a can. That's not as exciting as you would we think. We can do that before you die. <laughs> <laughs> Probably be more fun. Right. Like, uh, no, I want to request my head being on a pike. You don't have to kill yourself. My head must this. be on a pike, and you are then using a carrot peeler to take layers of flesh off my skull. Then you can boil my head, that's, little hanger up in the brain a long cavity, time. get it all, you know, like a European mount. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, we're doing taxidermy, yeah, right? Yeah. I can get some beetles to just eat the flesh off. You leave you outside. Yeah, for flesh a while. eating beetles. Just you know, bury, right. bury it in the mud. Whatever you got, though. Whatever. But crows, crows well, could probably help. I think. Other things that are unappealing: March twenty second, two thousand and seven, Whiny's husband, Dr. Roach is arrested for sexual assault of a child under the age of 13. Oh, uh, you know how I feel about all that shit. I do, and Whiny agrees with you. She files for divorce five days later. Yeah, good for her. So Get rid of that let's note. move on. <laughs> let's move on quickly. Uh, February 3rd, 2009, Sing Chapter 1, her first studio album in six years, is released. The lead-off uh, single is I Hear You Knocking, But You Can't Call Me Up. I, I hear you knocking. D- is that I did, are you? Is that actually correct? That how Brian's singing this, folks? Is I think it's right. I think he got this one. But you can't call me. All on. right. Knock, knock, knock on wood. It, I wanna knock, knock. All right. No, knock I don't. I'm wood. taking everything back. I said I don't think it's the right song. Is it? That's a blues standard. First recorded by Smiley Lewis. Oh, I wasn't expecting Smiley Lewis. Okay. All right. Uh, September 14th, 2010, the Judds appear on the Oprah Winfrey Show. You get a, uh, you get a car. You get a car. Everybody gets a car. Ah! Well, this wasn't get about getting stuff. Yeah, it was. It was about getting rid of stuff here because Whiny discusses, quote, her recent weight loss, her years of living dangerously, and what it's like going backstage as part of an iconic duo, the Judds. Whoa, 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 what do you mean, what it's like going backstage? Like, they were willing to pick out all the green M&Ms and put them in a silver bowl for you? Might be, or maybe, like, they had the <coughs> roadies, like, picking out dudes they were pointing at in the crowd, like, to have them come backstage, and to, if we're going to just Is that... blatantly steal oh, I thought... Van Halen's system, I didn't... Oh, I thought that you were talking saying she, she was on there for her, her weight, her weight slash weight loss. No, uh, she was on there for her weight loss, but again, uh, she just was letting, you know, pulling back the curtain, as we do sometimes. You just pull back the curtain and let share a little bit more than what people usually see. Hmm. You, you, so, you want to know uh, what? Here's something interesting. Sure. Just kind of thinking about this. So she, okay, you're kind of, you know, alluded to or kind of made a uh, an idea that she was pointing out dudes and they were bringing dudes back to, you know... <laughs> banger that was based off of the uh van halen system back in the well, day where they would point at their roadies and give them bonuses for picking out hot chicks in the crowd oh, right i just assumed the judds might have done the same thing oh and i hope no, they I did no no judgment i hope they did and I, right and i'm sure van halen did and poison and def leppard and motley Crue, oh, yeah. and guns oh, and sure, roses and 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 all of those bands every one of these rock groups out there Boys and girls alike. I mean, they were just like, whatever. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. And they did. They got them. They got groupies left Wendy and right. Wendy Williams. That's the other hardcore chick episode you should listen and, to. That lady's awesome. And, and 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 they did probably some of the most disgusting, horrific, god awful things <laughs> with other human beings in the world. To those people, all people. consensual. I'm sure. I'm sure it was yeah, great. Man. Whatever. You're famous. Go ahead. But but the, it's honestly the 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 bands they don't get in trouble for that. You ever notice that? Anybody? Are you suggesting that the Judds <clears throat> went out and just picked dudes out of the crowd to have their way with backstage? I don't know if they did or didn't, but I'm just saying bands in general never really got in trouble for doing that shit. And I guarantee to you, there are some heinous acts that went on that were terrible, but they got they don't get in trouble. Dude, <clears throat> I know exactly what you're talking about. In in my run up to uh, attempted musical fame as a drummer, I, I knew some people, and I saw one of my buddies sign somebody's anus with a sharpie marker. Oh, you want an autograph? Okay, here's where it's going. And uh, I'm just like, oh, you can do whatever you want if you're a famous musician. And look at this. And they weren't even famous. Not really. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Signed an anus. So, 
Yeah, dude, right on the old cornholio. I'm like, whoa. Why did that dude? That girl's, why did that dude that let him do name, that? <laughs> that girl's name was actually Carmen. I vividly remember the whole scenario going down, but uh, that's a whole other story. How do you write uh, your name on an Judds, ass? I mean, unless you're... I hope the Judds weren't doing that. I really. See Naomi's in there just getting in the cheeks. N N I O A O. There's no room for the eye. We're at, we'll just use that as the dot for the eye. We'll just leave well, it right there. I mean, if it ha couldn't be, if it was sweaty, sharpies don't work after they get wet. <laughs> yeah. You're breaking this down way too far, too. I don't want to go back there. <laughs> this story stinks. Block that out. Oh wow. <laughs> Uh, the Judds are at Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, and uh, she's giving out autographs, and the Judds are singing their new single, I Will Stand By You. I'll stand by you. We really put out some crap. Don't you never hurt me. I'll stand by you. I'll stand by you. Uh, that's released October 4th, 2010. I don't think that's the right song either. I'll stand by you. <laughs> right? I, I think that's the one. I think we actually got it. Let's say it is. Okay. <clears throat> I won't let anyone hurt you, Ben. All right. Yeah. I'll stand by you. 2011, she releases her first novel, Restless Heart. It's got a picture of Fabio on the cover, and he's dressed like a pirate. Uh, it makes a New York Times bestseller list. I'm kidding about Fabio. Like a fi November uh, like 27, a fiction, 2011. Like a, like a fiction, not not an autobiography or anything. A fiction. I'm kidding. No, Restless Heart, I do believe, is the story <clears throat> of wh whiny. Because she already had a book about her, didn't she? I'm pretty sure we did say she wrote a book. Yeah. And she had had a book that went with an album, that went like a concert, that went with a TV. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It was like the package deal. <clears throat> hey, Michelle, what's up? It's sorry, <clears throat> Michelle. He's forgetting. November 27th, 2011. I really want to call her Winnie, but it's not. It's Winnie because it's Winona. Don't call Winona. her Winnie. That's going to that's gonna throw my brain into a lower gear. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Winnie. Winona. W wonder Why? years are going to come Why? up. <laughs> Wonder, that girl is a smart mathematician now. Uh, Whiny debuts her new brand new uh, band. It's uh, Winona and the Big Noise. That's a terrible name. <laughs> Winona and the Big Noise? You don't like that? It, I almost said Winona and the Big Nose. And I'm uh, like, that's not that, good. That, that, I would, yes. Winona and the Big Nose. You could, be, you could, do, you could take the word big out. Winona and the Noise. That'd be better. Oh, that's actually it is better. I like the, you don't like the big, big noise. noise. Big, you got to get the word big out of there. It's gonna be it's a little boastful. Went on in the in the noise. Went on in the noise. They <laughs> debut in Nashville, Tennessee, December twenty fourth, two thousand eleven. Whiny gets engaged to her boyfriend, musician Cactus Moser. Was his you know name Cactus? Cactus, you know Cactus is? Was his name Cactus on the birth certificate? I couldn't find a birth certificate. He apparently was just born a full grown badass man. <laughs> it came out. He is, came out with a five o'clock shadow. That's right. Sorry about that, Mom. He's best known as the drummer for Highway 101. Uh they have songs like The Bed You Made for Me. Uh that song spent twenty four weeks on the hot country's charts, peaked at number four. I had never heard of it. Whiskey, if you want if you were a woman, that was number two for two straight number ones. Uh, somewhere tonight and cry, 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 and cry again. Cry, right? All right. Cactus Moser. Trust... Cactus, Mo... Cac Cactus Moser. 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 Bowser. Could be. Could be Moser. Bowser. Could be. Big Nintendo Bowser. fan. Bowser. Bowser. Uh, they married on June tenth, two thousand and twelve, at her home in. Lapeer's Fork, Tennessee, USA, August 2012. Um, Cactus, he's driving his Momo motorcycle, and he gets in an accident, which results in the amputation of his left leg above the knee. Ew. He was on Route 16 in the Black Hills when he crossed the center line, got hit by a car, and um, the drummer from Highway 101's only got one leg. Um, I wonder if he could join Def Leppard. So um, he was in the Black Hills. And what, what did you have a specific date he was up there doing that? Nah, just August. Yeah, that's like the uh, bike bike week up there. The big huge, oh, the big huge. That was not mentioned. Yeah, I bet I bet it was right but around yeah. there. I mean, people come 
early and they stay late. So it's not just the one big, huge wheat they got up there in the Buffalo Chip Campground. Um, but that is a huge deal up there, and it's fun. Was that Sturgis? Yeah, yeah, Sturgis and Deadwood and uh, uh, oh, Lead, man. and yeah. I think it's Lead, Lead or Lead. I think it's Lead. But yeah, they they have a it's 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 pretty Lima? cool. Lima. Ther- Matt and I went up there Lima? accidentally for Bike Week. <laughs> for Bike Week, did you? Yeah, we did. You you two, that's what you need. A bunch of truck driving, good old boys, uh, outback hunters. Oh, up there at Bike Week. We, that was the weekend that we were probably early twenties. And him and I were That's just gonna head up for, you. for three or four nights to the UP and screw around, you know, just kind of go camp and hike and fish and I don't know what. Sure. Get up to the UP, Lake of the Clouds, Western UP, and we ended up getting over into um, Wisconsin, and and it was still light out. We found a little campground, set up a tent. A neighbor, a guy that was camping kind of close to us, he walks over. Yeah, how y'all doing? So, oh, we're doing good. What? Where are you all from? We're all from Michigan. We decided to come up to the UP, and we ended up over here. Oh, wow. Where are you, where are you guys going? We're, well, we're heading home kind of tomorrow or the next day. We're not – this is as far as we're going. Oh, man. How many – you got a couple days to spend out here? Why don't you take yourselves on over to the Deadwood, South Dakota? You get up in the morning, and by the evening, you could be drinking a whiskey and Coke. And we're like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's go. Deadwood. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, we're going to Deadwood. And so he leaves and he's like, I'll see y'all later. I think I looked at him and I said, I want to put this fire out and go right now. Let's just get us, let's go. (laughs) We ended up driving through Wisconsin. We got into Minnesota. We ended up, I slept in the truck bed. He slept in the cab. Now, wait, is this when you accidentally camped in a cornfield? Yeah, in the the cornfield. That was that that night we were in a cornfield. We didn't find nowhere else. So we just like pulled off the side of the expressway, found a cornfield. I was in the cab and he, we're just both getting eaten up by mosquitoes. That next morning, we maybe got one or two hours of sleep. And we're just a tiny little truck rolling around. Every time I move, he can feel it. Every time, vice versa. So we ended up getting up at 5 in the morning at daybreak. And he goes, you ready to get the fuck out of here? I'm like, let's get out of here. Yeah, that night, whiskey and Coke. I got a picture of Matt and I framed hanging up downstairs of us drinking a whiskey and Coke with some just random dude, the first dude we met at the bar. (laughs) Just whiskey and Coke, Deadwood, South Dakota. Go west, young man. And this Go is where west. the guy lost his leg. Oh, that was bike week because we were there and there were bikes lined up and down the streets. It's a good thing you guys already wear assless leather chaps. I mean, you probably fit right in. Oh, those are packed in my. Those are packed in my. Uh, that's the go. Yeah, bag. that's my go bag. <laughs> well, all right. Let's get back to uh, whiny <clears throat> and uh, let's talk about the whole reason why. Why are we even talking about her, Ben? Why did I pick her as? A subject for us to cover on our well, show. She had one DUI. Her one of her husbands was a pedo. That's I was. What are we talking I'm, about? I, I'm hoping, and and sometimes it's early, and sometimes it's continuous, and sometimes it doesn't happen until the end of the show. But at some point, we all know there's a good, nice, juicy bite of crime in this story somewhere. I used to. Yeah, man. I used to before we were you know 70 episodes deep. Ask you, you know, ask you, Brian. I mean, hey, where's the crime? Come on, give me some of the good stuff. I need, I need, I need. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give I can wait. Now I, you know. I know it's coming. Now you know. I know it's coming. Patience, right? It's, it's like, it's like good EDM or dance music. It's like big build ups. I like big build ups. I like big build ups. And then you have the drop, and it just, oh, and that's what I like to do. All right. All right. Are you ready for the drop? Would she like steal somebody's newspaper off their porch or some shit? December of 2015, Whiny's daughter, Grace Pauline Kelly, has arrested at a Nashville Walgreens with a man named Richard Wilcutt. She is charged with felony promotion of methamphetamine manufacturer. She went straight up breaking bad, dude. She pleads guilty to possession of meth, which is a lighter charge. Um, she gets probation, goes to rehab. But she was manufacturing and distributing meth. She was a meth lab. Who who She's was? Meth lab. Her uh, daughter? Whiny's daughter, Grace Kelly. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That's why we're here, dude, because Grace Kelly is straight up a meth lab scientist. What are they called? Meth lab doctors? That seems wrong. They're uh, they're um they're they're cook they cook. They're they're chefs. They're chefs. 
Chefs. Yeah, that's right. Chefs. Meth they lab cook. chefs. I don't You're know. correct. You got it. They're cookers. Right. Uh, February 12th, 2016, um, Winnie and the Big Noise released their an, an album. So uh, they had two singles, Jesus is a Jukebox and Things I Lean On. Um, and November of 2016, Grace Kelly is arrested again, this time in Alabama as a fugitive. Because that her probation uh, she's on probation so her pro- oh my god words are hard she was on probation her probation was revoked um she's transferred to the drug court because of course she's like a meth chef and may of 2017 grace kelly pleads guilty to manufacturing delivering selling and possessing meth with the intent to distribute she faces charges in both williamston county tennessee if you wanted to hook up from there or the southern neighbor county maury county so she was running two counties deep man meth queen so she was cooking it she was making it and she was distributing and selling and doing all that stuff now was 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 cross county lines was winona doing any or not winona um yeah was winona Wine. doing any of that uh we'll get there no uh short answer okay but okay she, she has a quote coming up here in a second um uh so i said she faces charges in two counties she pleads guilty to the lesser charge of just possession because you know her mom's got some money so she's probably got good lawyers um kelly received a suspended sentence of 11 months and 29 days in jail and a fine of three thousand ninety two dollars and fifty cents she received an additional sentence of four years after pleading guilty to evading arrest which was also suspended. Again, good lawyers. Uh, that would have allowed her to serve the balance of her sentence on probation after she completed 30 days jail, March 2017, under the condition she first complete a 180-day in-house rehab program. So, June 2017, Grace Kelly is released from custody and continues her sentence at court-ordered rehab, but she left the rehab program on November 19th, violating the terms of her probation. So now she's been sentenced to eight years in prison after breaking those probation terms. Grace Kelly is at West Tennessee State Penitentiary. She will be eligible for parole on February 4th, 2019. That already happened. Um, Her projected release date was August 10th, 2025, but she's expected to just serve 30% of that sentence because big prison and overpopulation. In the wake of her daughter's continued legal battles, Whiny developed a passion for prison reform. Warden, warden, warden. Oh, yeah. Let oh. me out of jail. In the yeah, spring don't of worry. 2018. That shit goes away once your kid gets out. He'll feel much better. You're like, I think I did it. <laughs> He'll feel way better about that. Spring of 2018, Whiny meets with White House officials to discuss prison reform. We have a quote from her. She says, quote, I'll tell you this, my daughter's the strongest Judd woman in her street. Uh, she's healthier than I was at 23, and how she got there, I would not go that way. But I was also sequestered. Um, she continued to talk about growing up on a tour bus with her mom, Naomi Judd. Uh, quote, I was on the bus with my mother. Kind of hard to get in trouble that way. Uh, that could have been me if I didn't have music. So... Her mom was saved by music, or she could have been just like Grace Kelly. Updated records from the jail show Grace Kelly's status listed as parole. So yeah, well, that didn't all that hanging out with your mother and whatnot to keep you <laughs> honest didn't help, w- really work out for Billie Holiday. So we've already covered that oh, in an true. earlier episode. All right, wrap up when <laughs> let's wrap up whiny. Uh, I'm sorry, I made her seem really bad. She's not actually that whiny. I just anyway uh grace kelly her daughter still listed as parole that she must report to a parole officer until her sentence ends in september of 2024 october 2020 whiny releases a new ep titled recollections what year what year 2020 last year oh wow oh sorry don't date the show 2020 and 2021 the judds are inducted into the country music hall of fame and what we're going to do right now to end the show is a quote, as we do, from Christina Clare Simonilla Winona Judd herself. Quote, I used to worry about only the number ones and all the awards, but that was a long time ago. Winona Judd, everybody. Woo! I looked up her daughter. Well, I looked up her daughter on, okay. fa- on, the, on the internets. Oh yeah, you will see a lot of photos, a lot of mugshots. Yeah, a mugshot, and 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 my favorite part about this mugshot, I mean, she looks like a a lady, a girl, whatever. Walmart at midnight. But she's wearing the traditional 
black and white striped <laughs> jumpsuit. Yeah. That's awesome. Nope. I know the picture you're talking about. Just, yep. She don't look happy. She don't look happy that's at all. That's Tennessee, baby. I mean, that's that's what you wear in the Tennessee penitentiary system, man. You go right back to the old stripes. Yeah. I've seen some that are orange. A lot of that are orange and some that are just like green or gray or very mott you end up in west texas you'll be wearing pink yeah and sheriff joe or whoever that guy was i remember that and and no she's got what they would put you in if you were on an episode of bugs bunny <laughs> that's what <laughs> right. you're wearing so winona didn't do a whole lot of negative stuff no, but it sounds I, I just was it, looking through the history records and all of a sudden i saw that Winona Judd's daughter was arrested multiple times for breaking bad and make it, being meth lab chef. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know that. Well, like that's an unusual yeah. characteristic of a celebrity's child. And let me ask. So let, I thought we got to talk about it. We got to tell people. Let this. me ask you this, Brian. What do you, as 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 Brian J. Kinsley, think is sort of host crime and music. odd about that story? What's odd about that? Well, what do you need? What are you cooking meth for? The money? Like, what do you need? That just seems like a weird thing for a celebrity kid to do to acquire funding. Ding. Like, your mom's rich. Ding. Ding. <laughs> right? I mean, you, 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 you're not going hungry. You have a a family tradition. Ha- I mean, you could probably throw out any old crap-ass music and say, my grandma started doing this. My mom does it. Now I can do it, too. And you're right. you're gonna sell your shit. You could probably do something as 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 simple as a podcast or some <laughs> some some influencer bullshit on the uh, on the interweb, TikTok, Instagram stuff, whatever. Have you seen Roy Orbison the Third on Bravo and Below Deck? That's what he does. He just drinks some parties as Roy Orbison the Third. That's all we do, Brian. Um, but right, yeah, no, no, right. I agree. That's I asked you that question. I figured you'd probably say that, and you did. You're Winona Judd's daughter. I mean, you don't probably have a lot of wants, and all of a sudden you're cooking and selling meth. I mean, let's start. Let, That's let's just start boredom. Yeah, let's just start saying drug dealing. You don't need to do that. B meth. Seriously, pick a better drug. Better drugs are out well, there now. Hold on here. There is a little bit, you know, like she could have just been lazy about it and just done the meth. But, oh, no, she decided to be industrious and set up her own shop, learn how to make it herself. So, you know, you're not wasting money on somebody else cooking for you. You're doing it yourself. DIY. And then she's like, you know what? My recipe is so good. I think I can make some money selling this. Meth is a sad drug, though. I mean. Well, yeah, no, I'm just saying she was industrious, you know? It's not like she go, was just a lazy rich kid. Go go start a grow operation for weed, Calvin Johnson style. I mean... There you go. It, 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 you got the backing. You got a little scratch in your pocket. It's not like you need to start going and getting Sudafed and breaking into the Walgreens and... Ru- you got arrested at a Walgreens, dude. Like, ah, uh, excuse me, ma'am, I don't know that you need 76 boxes of Sudafed. Yeah. We're gonna have some questions, please. Could you mind writing your name down? Real I quick wonder if there's and, a little uh, bit of a, a little bit of a, 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 a trying to. I'm gonna make it on my own. I don't need to be. Ash, uh, what, I'll no, strike out on my own. My aunt Ashley Judd's really pretty and did a movie with Morgan Freeman and gets to be on TV every single March during the March Madness game. Yeah, I'm gonna. Your niece show was arrested them. for manufacturing men. Anyway. Yeah, Ashley. Ju- I can't get that Morgan Freeman. A- Ashley Judd's kind of she's kind of she's kind of a good looking lady, kind of good looking broad. Yeah. yeah, she's attractive. She's Ashley Judd, dude. Yeah. No, I no, I think no. I mean, still, I mean, back in her heyday, twenty years ago, and still today, good for her. I mean, like me, you know, you know, Clint Eastwood. He still looks pretty cool. I wonder if he's had plastic surgery. You think? I don't, I don't think so. Eh. He looks like he could play Groot. Uh, just with no makeup. He looks just... like his face was an old baseball mat, and in the best oh, possible way. In cool. the best possible way. That's what you want. Yeah. So, but I. All right. Well, we've 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 resorted to talking about uh, celebrities and cosmetic issues. So that brings us up to some feedback. <laughs> what well, no, Judd didn't look too bad. Still, she's still a kind of pretty girl. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. There's some attraction there. I got there's some uh, articles from her 50th birthday, and I was like, "Hey, you go, girl. Look at kind you. of a uh, kind of a bigger girl, maybe, but 
in a great, good way. I mean, yeah. It keeps your face looking nice. I think it keeps all the wrinkles pushed out. All right. We got a <laughs> speak pipe from Jace Face Bass Face. Hey, from the Windy City. How you guys doing? Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day, enjoying some crime and music. Um, I'd be interested. I, I, you know, I've listened to a good number of these uh, podcasts, and I'd be interested to see how far back you can go. Um, like, what's the oldest crime and music you guys can find? Oh, I well, that interesting. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the challenge. I like that idea. Um, so we had that one from that that dude from Italy. What was his name? J- Carlo Gisualdo. Yeah, that was 17th century? I think so, like 1640s, 1514, something like that. Yeah, I, f- so, I feel like there's yeah, got to be some pretty fucked up heart players out there we can probably track down a little bit. <laughs> I think we should try and find them. I will accept the challenge, Jay's face, face, face. Yeah. Crime and music is on the case. Yeah, we can probably try to f- try to figure it out, finger it out a little bit. All right. Uh, here we got a YouTube comment from Cat C. Cat. Cat C says, uh, this is on our Mindy McCready episode. That's why I said Mindy McCready would come back okay. around. So Cat C commented on uh, YouTube on our Mindy McCready episode. Cat C says, quote, you need to get rid of your boy, Ben. And I do mean boy. He can't stay on subject, which is why I watched the video in the first place. <laughs> those are my favorite, well, Ryan. You know this. I don't. Thank you, Cat C. Yeah. I don't know why I'm such a glutton for punishment, but you why know. Why do you like that? I mean, I get it, but geez. so and, and it's you know this episode is pretty much you not staying on topic. So uh, nailed it, Cat. Sorry, that's all you paid for. Thank you, Cat C. Appreciate you listening, Cat C. Everybody, hey. Um, okay, something else that I thought was pretty hot. We got us, uh, 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 well, it's a, it's a thing from Cowboy Eon One. Ian. Ian. I don't know. Uh, Ian One? In? 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 Well, Cowboy Ian. Well, hello again. Did the law get in your way? You think your fame would save the day? Were well, your acts off the stage not well received? Hey, did you do the crime? Did you pay the time? Private music has your file. Mm-hmm. Never trust a big butt in a smile. All right, yeah. and cuffs and stripes just ain't your style. Ben and Brian has your story of shame. Did you do the crime? Did you pay the time? Crime and music has your file. Mm-hmm. Did your guitar tell you to do bad things? Did your microphone amplify your angerings? Maybe you should just accept the blame. Did you do the crime? Did you pay the time? Crime and music has your file. Dude. Dude. So, wow, huh? What do you think? <laughs> All right, number one, wow, <laughs> and thank you, and thank you, Cowboy Ian. Pull your file. So, Ian. So, there's been a few folks that have graced us with their contribution, their their contributions to our our, our show. Um, their creativity. Yes. yes. And so we've had a, you know, we've had a lot of wonderful little bits, but there are a couple that have stood out to me that have taken probably more effort than what we put into an entire show, or at least me. Hey now, no, hey at now. least me. Yeah, like, <laughs> Whatever your job, right? Whatever. That's one of them. That is that's huge. That's enormous. That's production, baby. So not only was it a flawless, it was put together. In a very uh, great little format, where I, Brian, am I, am I going? Am I getting out of the? Am I am I going too far in saying that maybe that should be somewhere in our? Can we add that to our bit? I that can just yeah that can be some uh, 
break music intro out yeah i don't mind throwing that in there that's a good well we one. had a- I, just, I just wanted this to be our country spectacular episode and so uh, i've actually had that for a little bit uh cowboy Ian sent me that a while back and uh yeah i was just waiting for the right spot to put yeah it in. let's get this that episode seemed like it was let's great. get that worked in and i think we also need to give a little bit more of play time to that um there was a rap, uh, a flow that we had from one of our listeners a while back, probably two months ago. That was was spot fricking on, you know that. Oh yeah, yeah, the New Zealand high school. Yeah, kid. the New That's Zealand right. dude. Yeah, let's get let's yes. get let's get these let's get a couple of these inter- integrated into our into our regular kind of. Uh, I mean, th- I'd hire that guy. I mean, if I had any money, I'd hire him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's worth money that, what you've done there guys Those are, are people individuals. no wow that's thank you money. what was that guy's name let's make sure we get that that's cowboy in one yeah that's amazing did did we get any more info where he's from if he's in a band or anything like that nope wow <laughs> i mean i think it was a little it was a little bit produced on a maybe a loop or a mix on on there but his voice was was nice rich a nice tim that is it was, timber was, it was big and rich is it timber or timber. timber i can never remember timber timber nice tim a nice timber to it yeah awesome thank there you very is. much honestly from the bottom of our hearts as much as i love people making fun of me and saying terrible stuff i would rather have people contribute things that took a lot of high uh a lot of effort a lot of high quality uh work um, put that stuff together. That guy, the guy, not only could sing, probably a couple, a couple of instruments. He also not hit buttons on a computer, which, as we all know, buttons are hard. Buttons are hard. Buttons are hard. All right. Since we're talking about how buttons are hard, that's gonna wrap it up for another episode of Crime and Music. If you have liked what you've heard, please, or if you want to go leave your own feedback, be like Cowboy Ian one go to CrimeInMusic.com, leave us a speak pipe voicemail message, or send us a file at feedback at Crime in Music. Find us on all the uh, social media, same thing, at Crime in Music. We love hearing from you guys, like Ben's saying. I mean, man, it's awesome. It's, it's just good to know that people are out there listening uh, to what we do. We do actually, contrary to Ben's thoughts, uh, put a little bit of work into this. And so it's nice to know that people enjoy it. Uh, it's nice that we can bring you guys like an hour or so of just music history and a little bit of levity and sarcasm and fun stories uh, uh, relate basically everyone's lives all to one another. We're all in the same boat, man, called Planet Earth. So... With that, you got anything else to add? Thank you, Cowboy Ian. And you don't have to do what Cowboy Ian did, but it'd be much much cooler if you did. (laughs) Be a lot cooler if you did. Uh, With that, I'm out of here, man. Like the song says, never trust a big butt and a smile. You know, I wanted to change that saying that you did because it's, I think, getting worn out. But now Cowboy Ian put it in a song. I don't think we can change it now. 